Oh, it's like, you know what? Oh, yeah, that is Randy Newman because it sounds like every other Randy Newman song yeah. on the f- planet. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, I once was a kid. This movie's about kids and family. We're going to grow up and have kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, what? Thanks, Randy Newman. Just singing about what you see. All right. <laughs> Well, hello there, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on another new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. On this podcast, we review the classic movies that define the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s for us as kids. But with all the movies that were made in those decades, even the most seasoned movie buffs have inevitably missed a few popular movies. In talking about what movies we want to review next, we started noticing that there were a few instances where one of the hosts felt passionate about a particular movie from childhood, and the other two hosts had never seen it. So we came up with a new idea for an episode. We will be reviewing a classic movie from two different perspectives. First, from the perspective of someone who has seen the movie countless times, and secondly, from the perspective of two people that have just watched the movie for the first and only time. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me today are my two sons, AJ Venn and Sean Pryor. How the heck are you? I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> so this is a movie about family. I figured I'd bring my two sons in on this one, okay? Sorry, sorry for being a disappointment. <laughs> yeah. you, you should be. Are you Larry? Yeah. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't done shit. Man. Ugh. <laughs> so I know what you're thinking. I mean, illegal, illegal. I mean, illegal. crap. Should have done that on the bio down one. <laughs> Why is this coming out on a Monday? Maybe you missed our last couple Monday bonus episodes, so we'll let you know the exciting news. Because of the continued support of our Patreon members, we were finally able to pull the trigger on adding an additional episode per month. So if you're listening to this for the first time, this is not what our traditional episodes are like. This is the bonus. That's right. Uh, it's always been a continued dream to switch to four full-blown movie reviews per month. But since we've de- finally developed these like fun bonus episodes, like Mini Bites, Top 5 episodes I've never seen in this on-trial thing, we yeah. didn't want to get rid of them. So hence, our bonus episode every month. And the only reason we can do this is because of our Patreon members. So to everyone who's already a member, this is strictly and amazingly all for you. To anyone wanting to support this podcast, join all the cool kids at patreon.com slash confused breakfast to get access to weekly bonus episodes, voting on upcoming movies, a private discord server and more. Join 200 other happy and satisfied patrons. Remember the support, the more support we have there, obviously the more cool things we can do here. Patreon dot com slash confused breakfast what do you think sexy sexy all right boys so like we said in the intro today one of us has seen the movie countless times and the other two have never seen it it's time to reveal who is who i am the fan of the movie parenthood and oh. sean and aj have never seen it what well, <clears throat> well, 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 I, well i meant to i was gonna we- well Okay, wait. So you yeah. look you look at the the whole I remember I gave you two movie choices of two different movies you'd never seen. And you picked this movie. We did? Oh god. You did. No, base and here's why. Based on the cast. And that's, that's right. That's that, right. That is the insane thing to me about this movie is that this cast is unreal and it's right up our alley to Steve Martin, Keanu Reeves, Joaquin Phoenix, Rick Moranis, Martha Plimpton, Diane West, and way more. It's kind of amazing to me that you guys had never seen nor necessarily heard of this movie. W- what's the scoop? I don't know, man. I think I just, uh, I, as I was like trying to watch it, my girlfriend was like, "Wait, do you mean the TV show? Apparently, there's a Parenthood TV show or Parent Trap or Parent. <laughs> it's exactly it. Like I thought it was like that. I'm like, well, I have seen Parent Trap, so I don't need to go. I don't. Need I've to see never this. even seen this movie poster until you showed us. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I just just slipped my mind. Just slipped my zeitgeist. It's like I don't get me wrong. I love Steve Martin, but he was not somebody when I was very young. Like sought him out in that regard. This is like that in my mind. It was like this family kind of rom com comedy, and I'm not going to be drawn to this as I a want that. as a young kid, right? Yeah, I, mean, I was born in '89 when this was made. So, so that being that's really why I think, and I wouldn't have known who all those people really were. Um, other yeah. than maybe Steve Martin and like Rick Moran. Okay, so that that's actually super true because I I definitely saw this movie a ton as the a ton as a kid. I mean, 
all of the movie pretty much went over my head. Yeah. But I do remember liking all the kid involvement scenes because I was kind of I was kind of the same age as Kevin when I first saw this. Mm. Sort of weird. I, I don't, maybe my parents really liked this movie. I should have asked them about it. But we just watched this all the time. And there was there was vivid memories of me going, there's Keanu Reeves, like Bill and Ted's. Yeah. You know, like Keanu Reeves, he's sort of the same character, yeah. by the way. <laughs> kind uh, of. The drag racing scene, like, vividly stands out in my brain, and the the party, and all the kid stuff. Um, but again, the rest of it kind of went over my head. So I'll talk about it later, but I viewed this movie in, like, three different stages of life, and it was completely a different experience, and I related to different characters in this movie. So more to come on that, but uh, I, I'm a nostalgic rating i'm a five this is mm. just an average movie it's like oh, what if that's the only thing on cool we'll watch it okay yeah. but i did we like to do this we didn't do it the last <laughs> couple times we we like to ask the two people that have not seen this movie to essentially just look at the cover yeah. before <laughs> before we do it before they actually watch it and tell us what they think the movie's about so okay. let's hear what okay. aj's got to say okay. okay this is aj from the confused breakfast podcast how the heck are you uh, just got back from the pocket brewing, having to drink myself into some sort of stupor after watching Iowa football foreplay program uh, dick around even more um, <laughs> with this Illinois team. Anyways, parenthood. Uh, here we are. Spooky season. All right, guys? It's just <laughs> terrifying. Uh, Steve Martin obviously plays some sort of um, – Suburbanite's dad turned serial killer who is now literally hanging kids up upside down in his garage uh, while showcasing all of his victims on the wall behind him as oh they can be portrayed as family members, long lost family members. And um, it looks like he's on his way to go golfing too. There's only so many sadistic people in the world who would have such a smile on their, their face while wearing such pleated khakis um <laughs> other than that guys uh i guess we just have to watch this unfold and see how these kids turn this into a home alone <laughs> situation of getting back at uh so-called grandpa or dad <laughs> while he uh tries to hang them upside down in the garage okay <laughs> goodbye guys i love you <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was age. That was AJ thought. I think he's pretty spot on. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Let's that's see good. what Sean thought. Hey, this is Sean. Just getting back from back pocket, and you know they have great beers. Hawktoberfest is probably the best, but uh, them Hawkeyes, man, they just cannot literally pull save anything <laughs> out of their ass. Petrus, am I right? <laughs> Anyway, I'm looking at the Parent Trap, Parenthood, <laughs> sorry, um, poster here. We got Steve Martin um, hanging on to some kids and some pictures in the background. I believe this movie is about Steve Martin literally planting children uh, like he's a children gardener and um, somehow gets a seed, maybe his seed, uh, puts it right into his garden and grows these kids and plucks them out of the ground yeah. as so uh, with his bare hands. Um, I, I see Rick Moranis. I imagine he's got some some sort of magi stuff to say. Um, Keanu Reeves is there. I assume he's probably defending the world from these children. Yep. Like maybe they're while they're being plucked, they're, they are also evil and attacking people, but Steve Martin is, is the mastermind behind it. And then next to Keanu, I see an older Steve Martin, an older, like, more bony jawline Steve Martin. So <laughs> he's, uh, maybe, you know, maybe it's like a time travel thing. Um, but Parenthood, uh, let's go. <laughs> let's go that's uh i mean you know for real let's go is really what we want to do here. i think you guys nailed it i think you guys okay. really good that was that was before you watched the movie you've now since the watch watched the movie we're going to dissect this yeah. scene by scene but before we do that please don't forget to leave a review for us on podcast platform of choice that includes spotify now we need some more reviews some of those negative nellies are coming in just hitting the one star yeah. we'll give Aww. us some five stars we love that and also check us out on youtube get us on all the social medias go to confusedbreakfast.com yes. everything's in the episode notes so <clears throat> let's dive into this movie 
Uh, just a little bit of details before we talk full about it. Um, this was released on August 2nd, 1989. Grossed worldwide. So this is $126 million gross on a budget of $20 million. Wow. It was the number nine grossing film that year in a year of uh, pretty good movies in 1989. That was a great year. Oh, yeah. Directed by Ron Howard, written by Ron Howard, Lowell Gans, and Babalu Mandel. Great grandpa of Howie. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Okay. Um, this movie was based on Ron, Ron Howard, Brian Grazer, Lowell Gans, and Babalu Mandel's experiences as parents. They kind of came together and mm. told some anecdotes and stuff and tried to put it together in a movie. Um, so, Tomato Meter on this, any guesses on Tomato Meter? Uh, I would probably, you know what? I bet it's going to be higher. I bet it's going to be like an 8.7. No, tomato meter. Oh, sorry, 87%. Then. 87%. I'm yeah. going to go 81. This is a 92, which wow. is the number 14 rated movie we've done. That is tied with Days Confused, Jurassic Park, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. No. Is what the critics feel about this movie. <laughs> Just no. Um, the audience score being 76, IMDb being 7.0, which, of course, we don't even need to talk about that because no. I think that's our 11th or 12th movie that is a 7.0. So that just means it's a movie. If you're a movie and you exist, 7.0. <laughs> hey, did you guys see that movie? Which one? Yep. Yep, yep you <laughs> saw it. Great. That's it. Uh, a couple reviews for you. Kathy Mayo of the Showjourner. In 2019, good, good. said the glorification of fatherhood in today's films combined with the portrayal of women in the same movies as little more than breeding machines Jesus. is a treason against active motherhood and an attack on women who choose not to have children. Whoa. Huh. Impressive. I think you watched the wrong movie. Anyway, yeah. uh, Jeffers, Jeffrey Anderson, San Francisco Examiner, 2003, said one-dimensional characters and first-grade humor combined to make a self-important film that takes itself seriously horrible. Hmm. I got Siskel and Ebert on Ooh. this one. We very rarely do that. Sisk and Ebert. Sis Sisk <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Sisk gave this a 3.5 out of 4. Parenthood easily could have focused exclusively on yuppie parents and their kids. However, the script of Lowell Gans and Bob Lou Mandel is more sophisticated than that, remembering that every parent is still a child, too. Ebert, four out of four. It's the best kind of comedy where we recognize the truth of what's happening, even while we're smiling, and where we actually eventually acknowledge that there is truth in comedy that serious drama can never quite reach. Mm. Kind of nice, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Well, before we hit that full review, we have to first give a shout out to our amazing sponsor, NordVPN. We live in a world where everything we do is online. We're constantly connected to Wi-Fi, exposing all of our most sensitive information to the evil people that are on the other uh. end of the Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> the most important information that I have is stored on my computer. Band accounts, podcast stuff, real estate clients, family things, personal stuff. Losing any of those now would be absolutely detrimental and send me down a deep, dark spiral. Mm. So knowing how important internet privacy is, I still have never known what to do we all know it's important to protect your information but it's like yeah. how do i do that yeah so luckily nordvpn is a new sponsor of the podcast has all the tools you need in case you're a dummy vpn stands for virtual private network nordvpn provides a service that protects your internet connection and privacy online creates an encrypted tunnel for your data and protects your online identity by hiding your ip address and masking your virtual location um so i've been using the service for about two months now and i can tell you like I feel so much better about using public Wi-Fi hotspots. Knowing what I know about third party, like spies and everything, and like taking my info and like these random websites and Wi-Fi and apps, like I just feel so comfortable doing that. In fact, there's other crazy reasons. So um, if you use Nord PV NordVPN, um, you can access blocked websites. You can also watch TV and films via other streaming services oh, in other countries. Very important for Dude, us. Dude. Dude, so it's nuts. So I actually tried this. Um, I I watched the s movie Snowpiercer, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, yeah, I really. Oh, didn't they make a show? Oh, there's like a series, Snowpiercer. I went to watch it, not there. And then I go, oh, fuck, I wonder if that's just the U.S. I switched my VPN to U.K. Mm -hmm. yeah. and had Snowpiercer. Boom. Dude. It's, that's, uh, that is an, uh, for that alone, to be able to watch the things you want to watch and not get around like this unlawful government sur surveillance and just 
them choosing what you can watch and can't watch like that alone is worth it to me totally. it's, a, it's almost essential for doing this show to yeah. be honest like if you need to find something somewhere sometimes on netflix in uk they'll have more stuff than we do it's weird yeah but it's it's very useful very cool so go to nordvpn.com slash breakfast to receive a huge discount on a two-year plan in four free months completely risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee just try it see if you like it you're Be like fun. me you're like hell yeah let's do it so Listen, I promise you everything that you have is so important and that you have to give this a shot. You know you'll be hooked. NordVPN.com slash breakfast for all the perks. Everyone deserves a secure and unrestricted internet by encrypting your traffic and hiding the IP. NordVPN makes it a reality. Yeah. NordVPN breakfast. Yep. So, boys, <laughs> what do you say we dive into our analysis of the I've never seen chapter of this podcast? Parenthood. Yeah. yeah. So scene one, Gil Buckman is a 35-year-old father of three living in suburban St. Louis. His wife, Karen, is a stay-at-home mom. After daydreaming at a baseball game, they make the trip home and discuss some possible emotional issues that their oldest son, Kevin, is having. We next meet Gil's older son, or Gil's older sister, Helen. She's a divorced bank manager whose ex-husband wants nothing to do with her or her two children, Julie and Gary. Gary won't talk to her, and Julie is rebellious and more interested in her boyfriend, Todd, with one D, by the way. <laughs> They make I hate it. Todd, Todd and Julie make love in Julie's bedroom, documenting it with a camera. Gil's other sister, Susan, is a middle school teacher married to Nathan Huffner, a rather neurotic scientist. They are hard at work on their daughter, Patty, to make her a model child. So opening scene here. Did you recognize the young Gil? Did you recognize who this young child was at the baseball game? A little bit. Did you, AJ? Uh, I didn't pick it. So, so you know, you've got that weird little flashback, like he's he's talking to the to the guy, and he, he's the yeah. kid, but it's actually Gil Buckman as yeah. a child. That was Colt. That was Colt from Three Ninjas. Oh no shit! Are All you serious? Right. Yes, that was Colt from Three Ninjas. And I'll tell you what, like I laughed out loud. Like he, his delivery of those lines of those very hard to say lines was awesome. It's actually yeah. really great. It was great. Yeah, it was a very funny opening and intro introduction. Of it's like, oh yeah, you're just a an am amalam or something like that. <laughs> oh, what's an amalam? Amalgram or he's like he's like, yeah, you're just basically a, a composition of all the attendants over the years after my dad did this like several times over. And it's just like that's very funny. Yes. <laughs> I thought I thought it was I was I was I, w I won't say I was hooked at this point, but I was like, all right, you've got my attention. Yeah. This is let's, funny. Let's see where it goes. Let's from see here. what we can do. I, <laughs> I got I well, I was we start with baseball and Randy Newman and I'm like, wait. Hmm. We did this. Though. Wait a we, second. We already did this. Already done this movie. Is this major league? What's going on? Is this major league? And Wait a second. Is not. this big? <laughs> Wait a second. Is this? It's like what's going on here? <laughs> Every time it's a new Randy Newman song, I'm like, oh yeah, Randy Newman. People like him. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like I don't Joby get it, man. From the mountain bog. Oh wait, wait. Oh, it's like you know what? Oh yeah, that is Randy Newman because it sounds like every other Randy Newman song yeah. on the fucking planet. Bing <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, I once was a kid. This movie's about kids and family. We're gonna grow up. And have kids. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh, what? Thanks, Randy Newman. Just singing about what you see. All right. <laughs> I thought for sure when, when when the dad left the kid and asked the usher to like hang out with him for a bit, he's got like a rag thing on his hand, and it looks like a puppet. I think it's just like a to wipe down like dust, oh, okay. maybe. Yeah. I don't know exactly, but I thought it was like he's gonna use that to like entertain the kid as like a puppet. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, don't do this, but he didn't. But like, I would have done that probably. Like, you want me to do what? For like you pay me to do that, and I would be like, uh, hey, uh, uh, how much money am I making? Yeah, yeah I'll, watch, I'll watch your kid, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's so weird. Very I, strange. I love this scene where they leave the baseball game though, and that long shot of them walking. Oh my god, man! Because like you've seen that. Yeah, you've seen that happen in real life where there's two parents trying to wrangle three kids, and they've all got their their foam fingers, and they've got their some and their hot dogs, all like, the stuff. <laughs> going they... to sporting events like so fucking hard with that many kids. <laughs> Dude, oh it's hard God. with two dogs going anywhere. Oh, but I can't, can't imagine, imagine three human beings. Yeah, there's, there's, there's just no way. No, it, it, I don't. Uh, I, I'm the youngest of four boys, um, and I don't know. My, now, my oldest brother though is ten years older than me, and then the other two are in between. I don't know how my parents did anything though. <laughs> With four boys. Like, I'm thinking of, like, oh, my oldest brother would be 14 and I'd be four. Good Lord. Think about that. And what do you do? 
What the hell do you do? Yeah. How do you do it? You just try. You just put it into a van, and then you just hope it doesn't, like, explode <laughs> like a pack of, like, funny peanut yeah. jar. Like, what the fuck? Steve. Hey, man, that's what this movie's saying. There's no there's no life manual, AJ. Yeah, you just dude. gotta go with it, you know? It's so melodramatic, man. Yeah. Don't you get... Mm, okay. Steve, <laughs> Steve Martin plays that off so well, though, like... He finally gets them all in the car. Then the little girl runs away, and he gets her. And he shuts the door, and he just goes, <sighs> like, "Yeah, like, oh my god, <laughs> I got him contained." <laughs> it's like when you're <laughs> when you're on a date with a girl for the first time, and you finally you like open the car door for it and shut it, and then you let a fart go. Oh yeah, and that's the same yeah. thing that he did when he <laughs> shut the van door. Oh my god, or oh. she gets out of the second. car. She gets out of the car. You could finally light a cigarette. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think that went well. <laughs> yeah, I think that was okay. Uh, yeah, it, it's the idea that. Uh, I've always I've always wondered about that too. If uh, if those kids who, oh my dad did this, or like people who who have this like troubled kind of childhood, if you will, and that they they're like I'm gonna have a lot of kids and I'm gonna do it the right way. 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 Yeah, you know what I mean. If they if they gain that mentality and those are the those are the people who have a lot of kids, right? And then I feel like what if it's the opposite? What if it's like no, I had a I I'll be honest with you, I had a great freaking time. Uh, as a kid, it was it was great. I'm sure I put my parents through a hell, but I had a fantastic time as a kid. Oh, I'm just gonna hang out with my parents now that I'm older. It's like <laughs> pretty fun going down and hanging out with them. Actually. Are you gonna have so, kids? No. Oh, okay. Well, eventually. I, well, I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I have no idea. I got a dog. <laughs> I got a dog. That's pretty close, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. You know. Oh, f it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Those are the people. Yeah. That are like I, I I think that they're two very defined people is what I'm thinking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ma- Ma- Mary Steenbergen, Virgin, so good. She's like, is she is she is on she the list of like moms that you like TV is she, moms? Like, is, is she in the is she in the discussion of like best like lady you want to be your mom? Yeah, yeah, or, I'd say so. Or or is, wife or or, <laughs> or is she on the list of the milfiest milfs you want to know? Milfiest mm. milfs of the milfings. <laughs> I was going a different direction. With that, I know that. You guys are like, yeah, yes, oh yeah. Uh, you oh, knew it was oh, up right. in the air though. You knew one of us was going to say. Yeah, I, was, it. I was setting you up. You said you said or be your wife. So oh, uh, uh, yeah, because you guys were looking at me weird. But you're like, yeah, mom, sure, cool, whatever. I have a great mom. The, the stepbrother's mom. She's she, is, she, she might be the greatest mom. And she looks she looks so young in this. Th- but another she hasn't thing, aged. No, she still. really doesn't age. It's crazy. But but Steve Martin is supposed to be thirty five years old in this movie. No, has he, he ever looked thirty five? Well, no, I don't know if I've ever seen him not look the way he looks. Not uh, he, have white he hair. He has never aged, but he's also always been the same age. You know, yeah. like he came out looking like that. He did. <laughs> he, yeah. he came out with with pretty much white hair. Maybe there was some salt and pepper to Maybe. it. Yeah. But he came yeah. out. Other than that, though, that's just the way he's been. Yes. Can you imagine Steve Martin with, like, what I imagine must have been, like, black hair? No. I don't know if I've ever seen a photo of that. Right. Because I know there's, like, that his performance, like, his, like, one-man show or whatever, but it's a black and white photo. Right. And his hair is white. Yeah. So I have to imagine it's, like, a blonde or just, it just came out white. The best you get is salt and pepper. And, like, even in The Jerk, he doesn't look younger than... 40. Is this our first Steve Martin? Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That's right. Yep. Duh. Oh he was God, actually thanks. 44 in this, but uh, that goes to the stereotype. I, re- I remember watching this movie being like, oh, my God, that guy's so old. Yeah. You know, it's like 35. Wow. Like, man, yeah. I hope I'm never 35. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, later <laughs> on, when they like get pregnant, I'm like, oh, wow. For, yeah. That's for, pretty for, late. Whoa, that's late in life, bro. Yeah. I, I was just 40 when my kid was born. <laughs> <laughs> for yeah, for reference, for reference, I'm I'm 33. Yeah. By the way, I forgot I was 33. I thought I was 32 until I like had to do some sort of paperwork. Yeah, that something. I was like 33. Oh, oh my god! I think after no. 30, it's it's just like I don't even. It doesn't it matter. doesn't really matter anymore. But then I'm thinking like, so Steve Martin in this movie technically is two years older than what I am right now, and he's on his he's like he's on his fourth. Three. He's going on to his fourth. Yeah. And you're like, whew. And then I did the math. <laughs> And I was like, that's not far off from what, like, my dad was mm-hmm. and stuff, yeah. actually. Yeah. He, like, when I was born, because I was born in 89, yeah. same thing, man. No, it's, you should it's, ask your parents about this movie. Yeah. It's crazy to think about now because, like, I, I still look at some people just, like, in, like, regular life. I'm like, that dude's got, like, that dude's older than me. Right. And he's got, like, nine kids or something yeah. like that. But he's, he's like, a year older than me. Yeah. It turns out. Just looks like, older. Wait, what happened? What am I? Yeah. Am I just immature? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yes. What did I do? Yes, I am. So <laughs> switching families, we've got uh, we've got Helen, Gil's older sister Helen. Yeah. 
Diane West, funny enough that she's, what, now two out of the last three movies or something like that? Our yeah, I know. Lost it's Boys, the, obviously. Same haircut. <laughs> same haircut, same kind of acting style. But she, I think she got nominated for an Oscar uh, for this performance as so. supporting actress. I, I think it makes sense. Be- yeah. Because I can't remember if I said this during uh, Lost Boys, but how do, how is she how does she play the same essential character like a mom? But she'll play a different mom every single time. Actually. A divorced mom. A divorced mom. Yeah. Right? <laughs> or like Edward Scissorhands with two kids. <laughs> Very different from Lost Boys. Which is also that mom in Lost Boys, I think and personally I think this is very different from this mom yeah. in, in parenthood. And so I think it it's like, how do you have such a range in the, what is essentially the same role? <laughs> it's pretty well so done. So her kids grew up in this movie, Joaquin Phoenix and uh, what, what's her? Martha Plimpton. Martha Plimpton. Martha Plimpton. They grew up in this movie. And so she started having kids with uh, the new dude. Yep. And the the we at the end it's the it's the newborn. Yep. That's one of the brothers in Lost Boys. And something kind of turns out wrong with with that husband. And so she she moves to Santa Clarita. Okay. Right. No. Clara. Clara. Santa, Clara. Santa Clara. Carla. Carla. Santa Clara with her boys. And we get Lost Boys. Oh no. Damn. Can you believe that shit? I just don't like this at all. Mic drop. Let's just stop. Should uh, we stop? Uh, I think we're good, we're guys. Good? Let's go to the cool, bar. Cool, cool, cool. Right. <laughs> no. So did you? I mean, like, did you immediately go? Oh, that's Joaquin Phoenix. No, well, I saw like, the I saw the name, and I I remember like seeing um, clips of like him. Yes, and I, I, you can see the the hair lip, when, which kind of that's about the only thing that I feel like you only... could if you just showed somebody a quick photo of that and said what actor is this? Like I don't think many people are yeah. going to say that's a young Joaquin Phoenix because right. well, he looks totally different, and he's titled as Leaf. Leaf, yes, uh, right. Fe- uh, Phoenix, and so and I had to look because I was like, wait, Leaf Phoenix? I was like, River and Leaf. Does he? Uh, so I had to go look it up, and but it, it's the credit on like IMDb and all that. Uh, everything else has been redone to uh, yes. uh, Joaquin. So so it shows up in his filmography, right? Right, and and so but yeah, did not realize it, and uh, thought it was still pretty awesome <laughs> he though. Might be st- at this age, he might be one of the best actors in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's but crazy, then, and this is a good cast. It's a really good cast. We we kind of glossed over uh, uh, Keanu Reeves. Yes, sneaking out of the bedroom and everything, which is kind of I I was surprised to see that, um, in a movie in '89, kind of having this, uh, like the 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 juxtaposition of the parent and the um daughter doing mischievous things, yeah. quote unquote. Um, you don't really see that in movies. You re- either see one perspective over the other. But you saw both, both like right at the same time. So I was I was like, that's really cool. And Keanu Reeves is beyond being Keanu Reeves, but also, I really love. And it was kind of taken aback about how seamless this transitions from family member to family yeah. member. Like even in the script, they kind of mention a name, and it goes to G- that. Gil name. says, "At least, at least I'm not like my uh, my sister Helen." And, and it goes like, to her. Yeah. And yeah. and even the, even if the script doesn't even do it, it's still very seamless. Like yes. Ron Howard's a great director. Yeah. Really good director, and uh, I I just like that. It was it was a really cool cinema touch for me. Yeah. He's he's well, he's not Gary. And then it kind of cuts over to that family and everything. I, I still like I, I enjoyed watching it. Rick Moranis, though. Oh, my God. I really enjoyed watching everything. Nathan Huffner. Nathan Huffner. And I'm just, you know what? This is, is that is that the worst out of this, do you think, of the, like, the way that they kind of are? Or like, do you, are you guys, are you, are you guys willing to pass judgment, I guess, on this? On what? <laughs> of like. Either who you identify with, like as these these parents, or who you, you know, are are kind of guided to, or who you are like, ugh, you're raising terrible people, uh, yeah, or or you're n- maybe you were raising great people, well, or aren't something. we aren't we meant to believe that like they're all not good at it, like they're all bad in in their own way of it's in their seeming way of like dealing with their kids. Okay, so Nathan Hoffner's like no, like what are you doing to this poor little girl? You yeah. think you're doing right? Right. Same with same with Helen. She's you know she's trying her best, but it's just not good enough. She's yeah. Letting her kid leave with a brown paper bag, <laughs> and she doesn't know what's in it. And like Steve Martin, you know, like he's trying to, he's sure is trying his best, but is he doing a good job? I don't know. Yeah, he's trying his best. He's he's doing his best, but his son has uh, some sort of mental issues yeah. going on yeah. and he's he's questioning like well is it because of me it's like well just it's just people that's what kind of affected me most about this movie is there is that dynamic mm. um but w- to what you're saying i think 
uh, are, is this the first movie ever where I hate Rick Moranis? <laughs> right? oh, oh, is that what you're getting at? Like it right? sucks, right? It's well, that's he's a, f- a f- he's an idiot, and he's not like funny in this movie, right? He's very serious. It's uh, it's he, I, and obviously you're supposed to be very, just very put off by him yeah. mm-hmm. because he's he's so controlling. He's so um, I don't know. It's it's very. It, it, and I guess let me say this. I'll go back to what Mike said. Is anybody doing a good job? And maybe that's the point. Is anyone is. ever doing a good job yeah. by anyone else's standards? You know, because everybody's situation is so different, you know, and you have to do with what you can in the moment. You know, it's like I think that's that's the biggest takeaway as you've jumped from each yeah. family they they each think the other one's not doing good right, right. in reality like they're not they, they judge th- yourself too yeah, you they're know? they're <laughs> saying that about you yeah yeah and there's also a fourth by the way which is still gil's dad there. you know so oh, yeah yeah so next scene one day at a family party at the grandparents house gil's kid brother larry surprises the family with his arrival after a prolonged absence Gil's father is the only one who seems to have any remaining love for Larry. Larry introduces his son, Cool, whose existence had been (laughs) unknown to him until recently. Gil and Karen talk to the school counselor about Kevin. Todd and Julie go to develop their photos but find out her mom picked them up by accident. This causes an argument at home, and Julie moves out. So when he walked in, I'm like... Larry? Yeah. When Larry walks in, I'm like, he's either like a music producer or like a like a mogul like that, or he's just like a touring musician. You or thought something. you thought he was like really truly yeah. Doing I was good. I was trying to call this movie on maybe it's tropes, but it it got me. Yeah, I I didn't yeah. I didn't see him. I thought he was gonna be like the comedic relief of like the like the successful one yeah. and the, and the one that like doesn't have all these quote unquote burdens as right. as you could see them. In but the in movie. reality, he's like he's the worst one. Yeah. But dad loves him, you yeah. know, like it's it's a weird I think there are probably some dynamics out of there. And I think this probably came from their personal uh, experiences where there's there's sometimes the big families will have the kid who no matter what they do, the parents are just like, Bob, we, yeah, we love you, kid. And the other ones are like, what? Yeah. Like, what, was that ever a dynamic in your fa- You don't have to call out any of your family members, but, you know, uh, no, I mean, well, I think it's just one of those things of I think it shows the unconditional love that parents have and and if it can be even blinding to some degree um of like oh like i'm sure i was it's like i didn't want to go to college and stuff like that and so you know but what's my what are my parents going to do about it you know i'm going to tell them and so just things like that they just it's not that they give up but they're trying it's that they're they're like oh i'm going to love you either way yeah and i think I'm excited that you're home. You know what I mean? So that I think I don't know. It's a very very strange thing to watch and you get but you we get to watch it from Gill's perspective. Yeah, kind of. From the other family members perspective. We're all going, "What the fuck's up with this guy?" Like, it's Larry. He's always got something cooking. And my god, he gets off on a big yikes wrong foot. Did you catch that line he said? Uh Larry walks in and he gives, he's giving everybody a hug and he gives his sister Susan a hug. And he goes, oh, <laughs> yeah. Susan, if you weren't my sister. If you weren't my sister. And it just like, that was it. So I was like, whoa. What? <laughs> what? Larry, what is going on? Oh, here's cool, by the way. <laughs> his, his art project, it seems. His just, kid cool. Like, it's just like, he just brings him like, hey, here's my new piece. Check this out, you <laughs> the, know? It, dude, he no, doesn't I care think about you're right. It. Like, yeah, this is just my new accessory yeah, that exactly. helps me get some things that I want. I was, I, I told you, I told you to wait. I told you to wait. Be introduced or something like yeah, that. I, I hate it. Literally that. just leaving a kid in the car so Whoa. we can introduce him. That was pretty awful. Pretty awful. Um, so th- sometimes, you know, maybe we have to have t- moments of explanation uh, to to fans. I mean, you know, we do have some younger fans that are like, oh, yeah, I like I like watching those old 80s movies. <laughs> Fo- photo booth. I haven't thought about a photo booth in two decades. Right. Yeah. Of the fact of the matter that you had to literally take your photos to a little, there's always a little shack in yeah. like a mall parking lot, and you dropped it off. And they gave they they like wrote your name down on the thing, and then you came back a day or two later and picked it up. It's a good thing Brad Wesley brought in the photo map. That's right? what That's I'm right. saying, man. <laughs> right. Maybe they live in that town. <laughs> that what do you? Th- <laughs> I, this was always weird to me as a child watching this movie, being like, "What? I don't get it." Like I didn't know what they were doing, and I didn't know what was so bad about this. Yeah. But like, that's a uh, um, yeah. 
Actually, wasn't there a rule that if there was any nudity, like they would confiscate your photos? I was that a myth or was that a thing? I think they had to give them to you, but they did look at them. Like they had to develop them. Yeah, oh my had, god, you had to right. let Somebody other people develop these. You, we just we 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 made a a, a a spiritual pact with these workers who work at these photo <laughs> booths. I mean, we didn't. We didn't do like nudes at the time <laughs> where these where these are around. But our <laughs> the parents, royal we. the royal, our we. parents, the did. royal <laughs> we. <laughs> our parents had to make a pa- a, men- a mental pact with these workers. The mutual trust was like we don't talk about what we saw. You know, yes. we we won't talk about what we just saw on your photos, and you don't and you don't look us look at us any other way. Yeah, you know, we you know that we saw, and we just shut up yes. about it. That is what's that's the bartership. All you need to see is my ID. Don't look me in the eyes. Yes. When I pick <laughs> the up. Okay, that's all you need to see. Apparently, you don't need to see my ID. You just tell me my name, and I give you the photos. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. Like, what the heck, dude? Dude, can you imagine being? whatever 16 17 years old and your parents d- getting a roll of film of that of you doing that and she's just looking and like stop looking at him you, she's still she's like, going oh, all right <laughs> <laughs> like well i'm trying to be understanding uh, no, no stop trying to understand that's a you new immediately one. close <laughs> that and put it on the counter and go that's the moment where you put it on the counter and you leave it there so that they know you saw it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And you go, I'm going to need time before I can talk to you about this. <laughs> yeah. But also, here's your photos. <laughs> Where's oh, mine? Yeah. Here's your photos. Where's mine? <laughs> can I have mine? Because I need those for I need, I need those for the scrapbook at work for the, the dinner party, the bank party, whatever, you know? It's like whatever it was. <laughs> Ugh. I, I don't know. I, I liked, know. Uh, did you guys notice um, Gil's boss? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Sorry, Mister Goldberg. The rules say you got to play it as it lays. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I was trying to work out a world in my head where he like eventually gets fired for that from that job and goes on to be the uh, tour manager <laughs> of the PGA. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that would have worked out pretty yes. good, right? I like uh, the scene where he his son is in the arcade playing bad dudes. By the way, bad dudes. I called it out before they even said it. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, so that's sick, bad dudes. And he's like, well, I guess that's probably why they call it bad dudes, huh? And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, 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 hell yeah, awesome. <laughs> uh, I got kind of emotional at this scene where he's talking to his son. His son's like ask asking him, uh, like, am I am I weird? Am, am I wrong for like I have to go talk to somebody about this stuff? Like, am I? He's like, no, man. Like, it's. You just, sometimes you, you're like may may be a little different, but that's fucking fine. It's okay, and I just feel like not a lot of parents f- kind of break it down like that anymore. Uh, sadly, because I think a lot of people are lost nowadays, especially. But I just I think it it, it reminded me of like when I have a child, and if they're maybe like me and might have to have some special attention in the school, let's say, or uh, go talk to somebody. Um, the way that I would break it down is like it's fine. And uh, you're not you're not weird. Yeah, you're not weird at all. You just it's just you just need this a little extra a little extra push for you. You know, yeah. you're, it's 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 just fine. You know, it's the way he broke it down was was very very cool. Absolutely. It seems also maybe I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like it seems actually a pretty progressive thing to yeah. tackle. Yeah. In 1989, it, back then it would have been like, whew, you know, and you can tell how everybody rea- how they're reacting in the school, being yeah. like, "What? No, our kids not. No, yeah. they, they don't have those crazy problems." Like, yeah. Where now it shows you how, lo- how far mental health has come. Like, it's Absolutely. just like, oh, okay, yeah, definitely, definitely a very scary stigma of that they're there, and he even says it that way talking too. To shrink and and he's like, he's like, obviously there's a stigma about this, you know, while he's talking to the principal and. Yeah. Um, the other person that came in, the uh, child psychologist yeah, yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know <laughs> they have that. It's kind of a, it's kind of comedic and everything. Where he's like, "Well, she smoked dope," <laughs> 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 uh, but at the same time, I wonder that's if it's that kind of a scary thing. You know how much of a how much of a stigma it was back then, and and like you say, nowadays. Um, it's it's not anymore, and yeah. it's kind of it's kind of scary. It's kind of sad that it wasn't you know presented wasn't that, way. that way. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it sucks, man. So so Larry asks his father for some money, and his father obliges. Susan, 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 and yes. Nathan. I was reading Susan and Nathan at the same time. Susan, Susan. that's Susan. a couple <laughs> name. <laughs> they argue about having more kids. Gil <laughs> finds out he doesn't get a partner opportunity at work, and then embarrasses his son by putting Kevin at second base to lose the baseball game. Julie comes home and accidentally spills the beans that her and Todd got married. 
when the hired cowboy intended to provide entertainment for Kevin's birthday parties accidentally swapped with the stripper, Gil has to turn himself into a cowboy. His entertainment proves to be a hit. You see the dude, uh, you, you notice the dude um, at the baseball game in the, yeah. in the, in the, in the oh, dude. Yeah. Uh, Clint Howard, Clint Clint Howard. Howard yes. which, by the way, I know I know his face like everyone knows his face. He's been in Waterboy and everything. I didn't know that was Ron Howard's brother. He's yeah. in I didn't like know every, his name was Clint Howard he's in like every one of his movies. Yeah, almost. Yeah, he's he's pretty good comedic relief in that in oh, that absolutely. aspect. Yeah. of it. Yeah. He's, he's like the South Park episode where the, the, his, the dads go to the Little League and they get hammered and they're, they're <laughs> oh, more yeah. into it than the kids are. You know, they take it more seriously. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the living embodiment of that. Yeah, I love I love Clint Howard. He's like a, he's he's all like he as he's in these Ron Howard movies. They're pretty prestigious. You yeah, know, they're kind of lifted above. But he's just like hey, but also he's in movies like Evil Dead sometimes. Yeah, like like uh, or like Evil Bong or something. Yeah, you know, he'll do those movies, which I love about him. There, there's a couple um like interesting Steve Martin flashbacks here. Like at first he pictures his kid being the valedictorian and. And thanking oh, his yeah. dad at the party, you know. But then there's this this terrorist flashback. Oh my gosh! That that was that was a thing that like back then it was like there was no such thing as school shootings and mass shootings happening back then. Yeah, not as prominent. Uh, yeah, yeah, as, you're yeah, correct. Yeah, like, yeah, of yeah. course, things happen, but uh, it wasn't a thing that they could easily put this into this movie and just go, <laughs> "See, look, this is what'll happen." Kind of a kind of a one-off joke. It was a complete joke, and now it's like, oh my yeah. god. Yeah, yeah, like they did the one, the valedictorian thing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like. I'll discuss it later, like with the dream that, or like the yep. what could have been dream sequences. I'll say, um, but it was like I was like, oh yeah, that's fun. And then this one happened. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> whoa. Yeah. Well, it uh, uh, yeah, it was like uh, um, reminiscent of the the uh, Texas state shooter. I think mm-hmm. back in the '60s, mm-hmm. he was up in the the tower, the right? Tower. Yeah, um, yeah, weird. Very fucking weird. So when the the what what do you think about this whole cowboy uh, scene? I mean, is he just the greatest dad in the entire planet? Will do anything for his kids? I I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think he. It's a combination of him really trying to do the best thing for his kids, but also being like, literally, one more thing is going to make my kid lose his shit. Like this yeah. has been a bad couple weeks yeah, for yeah, my yeah. kid. And I I think it's I think it's hilarious. I love this is this is Steve Martin. Like right. hit the, him doing this in this fucking his costume, he like cut up a bath rug. Yeah, yeah, and made the, for the chaps <laughs> made or whatever. The chaps out of it. <laughs> like that. That uh, this is one of those scenes as a kid that I was just like, duh. You know, like this. This is hilarious. This yeah. movie's awesome. I would love to be at that party. Yeah, this is so cool. As a as a kid, uh, you know, it's it's fun. It's fun to watch this turn. From the kids recognize like you're just you're just dad. You're just dad. But then And he the, keeps going, he goes, No. But he just keeps playing it through until he yeah. has them all in the palm of his hand. And it's a very endearing moment it that is. he did that. Um and got away with it, I think. That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> yes. Exactly. That's the that's the biggest it's thing out of it. It's actually a success. It was it's, actually it's a success. It's know your audience. You yeah. know, it's like uh he, they they're like, No, you're you're uh Kevin's dad, right? Kevin's dad, yeah. You're Kevin's, you're Kevin's dad. Kevin's he's dead. like, no, I'm not. And it's like they like violence, so he's like, oh, here, like they start shooting at him, or whatever, and they start shooting back. It's like just know your audience. Like they obviously these kids are maniacs. Yes, and provide want, them, and provide them some sh- fun time. Let's go shoot everything. So just break out a gun and slip it on his guts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, exactly. Ah, oh. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a line there's a line in this movie that I. I've heard a million times that I, uh, however many times I've seen this movie, you're just like, man, whatever. Uh, my God, it was crushing to me now hearing this, now having a child. Uh, like the day is over and Kevin's in his bed and Kevin says, Dad, when I grow up, I want to work where you work. And he's like, well, why? He's like, because then we can see each other every day. Oh. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Wow, like that's as a as a parent. I, I don't my my kid doesn't even talk yet. Yeah. But like you you talk to other parents, you talk to your parents, and there are those you do everything for your kids for like no recognition. You just do yeah. it because they're your kid. But like to have a moment where your kid genuinely 
loves you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is like, you're the coolest person on the planet. Like, that's, you see Steve Martin just, yeah. Right. Which which is actually crazy about this whole thing, because um, uh, so what was it? Uh, let me see if I can find this. So Steve Martin plays the father of several children in this movie, but in reality, Steve Martin did not become a parent until he was 67 years old. Wow. wow. Steve Martin did not have children until he was 67. So he was, he was acting this role, not even really knowing how to do it. Uh, Interesting. But I, he sells me on it. Yeah, yeah, completely. Even in the beginning scene where it's like just just chaos, just trying to get these kids in this car and get them wrangled in and try and get them home. And that's I would be like inside freaking out like I need a fucking cigarette, dude, like right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, in order to deal with any of this. But then like of all that turmoil, once you like tuck them into bed, you get that one, you know, um, unprompted. I love you, dad. And I'm sure everything just kind of is like the day was fucking amazing. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 100%. Uh, well, so Gary is devastated that his father isn't interested in him and vandalizes his dad's office. His mom finds porn in his room. Todd steps in to help Gary. The father finds out how much trouble Larry's, Larry is in. Meanwhile, sick and tired of Nathan's obsessive bearings over the family, Susan tells him that she's leaving him. Hel Helen finally seems to be f fitting into a place where she's happy. She's begun, begun dating again and goes out with Gary's science teacher, George Bowman. And Gary seems happy spending more time with Todd until one day Julie and Todd break up and Julie reveals she is pregnant. Oh, I mean, they go into Gary's room and it's my room. It's it's basically your room <laughs> now. Basically, it's your room before you moved in with your girlfriend. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's my entire apartment before I moved in with my girlfriend. I've been there. It's yes. real nice. <laughs> it's real nice. <laughs> Just posters and movies yeah. and porn everywhere. Uh, how old are we thinking that Gary's supposed to be in this movie? Fifteen. I don't know. I because because we're thinking Julie is has gr Julie's a, maybe a senior in high school. I think she's about seventeen, eighteen. So then he's. Maybe 14, 13, 14, 15. 15? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then she just has no control over him w at all. Yeah. He's just leaving the house. Uh, and then he's got this little bag of porn, which had me fooled again, too. Like the Back <laughs> to the Future case. Yeah. It's like, oh, thank God. Oh, God. Oh, oh no. <laughs> totally fooled me. I was like, I was like, wait, why did he have that in the in the brown bag then? Like, did he, did oh, he start did, a movie? Oh, club? did he take it from the from the. Did he take it from the video store? And then it falls out. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, damn. <laughs> no, no, it's yeah. still porn. Oh, it's tits. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's just tits. Awesome. Is uh, is Martha Plimpton, a.k.a. Charlie Tahan or whatever, Wyatt from Ozark, um, they look exactly like. <laughs> you think so? Uh, <laughs> oh, my they, God. <laughs> they look exactly like. They dude. do. There's, like, I'll need a side-by-side -side at some point, but her Martha Plimpton in this movie looks just like Charlie Tahan. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's super bad, super dark times or whatever. Yeah, like that guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Like hundred <laughs> percent. But 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 is she is she she is she just like the dumbest person in this movie? <laughs> Can She's I go out on that limb? I don't think you're allowed well, I, as a male to speak on that. <laughs> because fair enough. You know, like <laughs> a, 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 d there's differing points of life. Uh, you Absolutely. know, when you're at that age. A uh, female woman, like there's different concerns than there is for that age, male. How about uh, this? How about <laughs> is is it her and Todd the stupidest people in yes, this movie? Yeah. Correct. Oh, there yeah, you okay. go. Now you got it. You and nailed it. it. And, but and it's, it's, it leads me to my next point: Is this the stupidest part of life for anybody? To stupidest be part of life. Of course, you make you of make all your anybody. mistakes right like, here. Yeah, all your mis like us. Like I think for uh, like for most people. You know, or like as you're going through these like late teens and you're struggling with who you're supposed to be and you're getting all this pressure thrown on you and all that stuff. And you but you still make all these dumb decisions yeah. and, you know, making mistakes, which are necessary. They're yes. necessary. Yes. Very necessary. I'm, and that's what I'm getting at is like all these mistakes that are made and they're made out of what appears to be passion. Exactly. Essentially, right? Yeah, almost blind passion, you could yeah. say, but it's passion nonetheless and at least right. you're feeling something at the time. Absolutely. You know, even like make, going out and making mistakes, not like a, a child isn't necessarily a mistake, but also it's a, it's a, kind of uh, a, a grounding thing for them you know it kind right. of slows their passion down a little bit you could say but also not really because we have all these other examples of 
pure passion happening with like uh, Gil and his kids. It's just like that's what they have to look forward to. It's a nice juxta- juxtaposition of like what they're probably going to be. It's obviously what the movie's getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, juxta- juxtaposing the young and the reckless with the old and the, you know, kind of seemingly non reckless. Seemingly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think. I, I think it's just such a this is this is where I find the movie actually very fascinating and I was I was watching it as as like a, a glimpse into the future almost mm-hmm. now at this point because we're about to have a kid yep and it's it, you're you're watching this in the idea that uh, again it's almost reassuring in a very very strange way that you can that you can like this whole entire movie at, up to this point is like yeah you're not going to do almost anything right no nope. yeah. but it's okay <laughs> you know, and, it's and like, hopefully they make it through it because time we just all make keeps, it through it time just keeps going whether you fucking like it or not right and it's honestly the thing about this movie that is i i, I think that could have been a little bit more left under the the surface a little bit for me because even sometimes they say it like you know man life Life I'll tell you doesn't give you a playbook you know it just doesn't you know it says it something i'm just yeah, like uh i know but the roller coaster some analogy. Of, some of my yeah, some of yeah. my only flaw about the about the movie, which I'll get into it in in the end. But yeah, I I do like the message, of course. But it sometimes a little bit beaten over the head a little bit. It, yeah. It's cool how like um, Nathan, like Susan knows Nathan Rick Moranis's character so well that she does the flashcard thing. Because if you think about it from a perspective, she had the flashcards perfectly ready to roll so that. She knew that he would just read it, and then when she got to the the question of and of your I'm leaving you, he'd be like he would come out of reading it and then react to her, and then the next one is yes, yeah. you know, like so she knows yeah. him so well that she goes, this is the order he'll consider, he'll read it, and then this is when he'll react, and then he'll ask this question. Yeah. Right. I thought I thought that was a it. It was also kind of weird to me is like oh man, like you're just you guys are just getting a divorce now, like because of that, like. So- with their relationship, what do you think is worse? Like poking a hole in your in your pregnancy protection diaphragm or Rick Moranis like essentially taking a fucking magnifying glass and seeing water drip through it? Is you doing it or suspecting that someone's doing it? <laughs> and doing and it. trying I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I maybe they're not good. It's together. not a great it's that's there if you're picking like a let's say you're picking a a sibling of those four siblings and going what's the worst storyline i think that's the worst storyline yeah it's just sort of like "Mm." it's interesting to see rick moranis play this sort of character because you love him obviously in ghostbusters and everything else that he's in uh and it's interesting to see him play this kind of almost hateable character yeah normally this this character would be like the big handsome good-looking jock guy who's got the six-pack and doesn't eat carbs sure in my mind, right? But the, but in it's like and is cheating, right? Yeah. yeah. And but it's Rick Moranis who is very very Short. very invested. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> invested in his child. Like these are these are qualities like that are would normally be extremely endearing. You know, like that you are True. like. Oh, like he, he just really cares about the future of his kid. Really, just cares about his family and like uh, wants wants him to learn, wants him to grow up the right way, and wants to do all this stuff. And then you realize just how almost weirdly toxic it is. How yeah. invested he is. He's know, trying to tailor how, how yeah how he's, how he's trying to control yeah. every single aspect and how that how detrimental that can be. He's trying to like literally tailor his own child to his liking. Yeah, going not even as far as like altering its the child's biology you know right you could see that happening you know yeah like uh, with its with the child's not agreeing to it you know (laughs) yeah like it's almost like scary it is Uh, it's it's freaky almost yeah so so gil quits his job but then finds out that karen is pregnant before the little league game he has a meaningful talk with his dad and then kevin makes the game winning catch Larry proves to be a piece of shit, and Nathan is able... <laughs> that was not in the Wikipedia. I just added that. And Nathan is able to win back Susan at her school. Julie and Todd reconcile after a drag racing, racing crash. The movie ends with new babies all around. I love the scene um, that we get the tease of... Yeah, I gave uh, Rick Moranis' character... 
Nathan. Let's, Nathan. I gave Nathan head on the road one time, you know. <laughs> and then we get that with Mary Steen version and Steve Martin. And he's like, I'll relieve some tension. The perfect cut. <laughs> so fucking, she just goes down, and it's just like a and he goes, slow, Whoa. a slow pull out of the car crash. Yes. <laughs> and I so love. So how did this happen? Show him, honey. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> fucking love that. That was so good. There, there, there was another quote. Um, you know, the older you get, the more you realize this. Again, I only saw this as a kid. Then I saw it as like, like a teenager. So I was relating to Todd and and. Uh, julie mm. more of the yeah like let them do what they want they're adults now too yeah um but then then you like you get older and you start to see it more from the parents perspective like or just the adult perspective when steve martin is having that breakdown just and he goes like my whole life is have to like i have to do this yeah. my whole life is have to and he, and like that that's a very poignant moment of like becoming an adult and realizing that like that's it man like you you now have to do these things. Yeah. Hope yeah. you enjoyed the ride earlier before that, because yikes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's like based on the choice, the choices that have all gone up to this, you have to stay at that job. That you have to you yes, I kind of do expect you to go back and ask for that job back. Mm -hmm. You quit. You have to. So yeah, you have to. Like, yeah, you have to take the you you because you signed up to be the coach for little league you yes. have to you have you to. have to do those things and i think that's i think that's you have to podcast on sunday you have to really podcast tired. on sunday <laughs> it doesn't matter you know and I, th I think it's a it's a good point and it's very personal for him but it's also i think it's the same way though for um for his wife though too you know i don't think yeah and that's i don't think that you know, it's very much a have to moment for him, but it's also, I think the, and what they're discussing at yeah, this point oh yeah. in time is also another big thing too. I think he kind of compares that saying as like w women have the choice and men have to, like they, they have the have to attitude, you know? Yeah. And she's like, you fucking bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it is. And I, I kind of agree with the, one of the reviewers who was saying just like, it's kind of these, these women are just kind of uh, fuck machines who just birth children. Right. And it's yeah, in 2019, it's very easy to it's say that. Very <laughs> easy to say that. But like, I do think that these women do have agency, like, in, especially in that yeah. moment where she's like, are oh, you yeah. kidding me? No, you're fucking insane. Yeah, yeah. That, I work just as hard as you. Oh, totally, man. It, it was awesome to see her just be like, no. Like, that, that's where this movie didn't just live in that world of just like, oh, whatever. It's just, we're just talking about the male stories. Yeah. There's a lot of There's the no writing it off just No, with that. there was female stories and female coming around and... And and males being like going from here to there and there fucking Larry like yeah. is the biggest piece of shit in this yeah. movie like his arc his arc is is like start at the bottom and then fall off the cliff yeah like I mean it's it's terrible to see the choices and how him and his dad react at the end here I I we haven't talked about the dad much Jason yeah yeah Robards man yeah dude such a good actor of course and he and you uh, like you hate him in this movie because mm. he is not a good person. Um, is Jason right Robards, the dad? Yeah, yeah, uh, Steve Martin's dad. Yeah, yeah. Jason yeah, Robards. he's not he's not a good person in this movie. Right from the beginning, they're talking about how his, oh, his he, he brought him to the kid, track yeah. and just left his kid, and how he he's just such a such a bad person, and he he only likes the one son who's the worst of them all. But then this moment where he shows up at the baseball field, it was like whew, brought me all back. Like I was mm. like, okay, you just got a really tough exterior here, man. Like you do. It goes. Th those are those people in life that you're trying to find acceptance from, and you can't get. Yeah. Mm. But when they finally give it to you, you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. "Yeah, I got it." Like that. That's what his dad is, and what he gave Steve Martin's character in that moment. It was awesome. It was just a. I really liked that speech that happened between the two, the dad and son. You know. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. I think it's um, it, it finally humanizes the dad for you a little bit. Yep. Um, it gives. It gives uh, Steve Steve Martin some uh, it gives Gil some perspective that he really didn't have, or maybe he didn't have. It gives the dad perspective about Gil that he didn't have, that because he says like, "Oh, you're like you know you're a great fa father," so I wanted to ask you about advice. He's yeah. like, and then you realize it's like, yeah, like one kid's in you know psychiatric therapy. I just quit my job. I like I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And it's again, it just kind of takes it back to this whole 
idea that really nobody does probably have it as together as you really think they nope. might. Mm-hmm. Nope. And I love that that's almost like a theme throughout the entire movie. The whole thing with the dad and and Larry at the end, it's just that constant moment of Larry just every single time. But what if? I just talked with an associate in Chile. Yeah. <laughs> and he said that there's a really great opportunity, platinum. And, just, and he goes through this whole spiel after, out. after he just had this out. And it, it just gives us this one more inkling of getting away with bullshit, you know? Mm. Like, he just gets his bullshit fed just a little bit more. The dad feeds it. He gives him the money at the end. And he kind of just says, like, whatever, yep. you know? And did you guys, did that, how did you guys feel about that? Well, here's what I'm thinking on that. I think that the reason um, the dad is more sort of uh, keen on Larry's situation and more, maybe more relating to him and having like maybe like a better back and forth with him um, throughout this entire movie and their life as characters is that he's the most like him because we see in the beginning uh, mm. he leaves. I uh, gotcha. Maybe we can assume that he goes and, s- and goes to like a bookie or Probably, a, somebody man. who's doing some betting as well. I think that he's kind of perpetuating him, maybe trying to get him in the path of of him like he maybe Jason Robart's character had a an out right like, like his father like maybe his father he was his the out. most work too exactly. he's like I I need to work on this I need yeah. to work on Larry yeah that I, that just came to me now because I was just like the the beginning scene and their their kind of yeah. relationship is yeah, yeah yeah it's really weird yeah it's it's a very strange thing and and it's all it's all just the resolve yep of this in fact there's really not much. Yeah, what 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 is this ending to you? Like, were, were you were you surprised? That, like, with the weird reveal of like who was the actually one having the kid? Did that do anything for you? Or? No, I, I it solidified maybe that you know Gary has like a, a good male role model yep, now to yep. look up to and two of them yeah potentially now Todd sure. and the new dad because he said I do like that you're dating this guy yeah um, that's that's nice but yeah it's just it's the progression of life and maybe like that reveal is just like a you never know what's going to happen yeah. kind of thing yeah. and it's kind of that's more the storytelling that i wanted in this yeah. movie is the is the the showing and not like hey life doesn't give you a playbook man. beating you over the head with yeah. it yeah that's i like so i do like the ending in that aspect i really liked the roller coaster because there was ups and downs <laughs> <laughs> and you know it was fast, and then there were times that it was slow, and this and that. But then I had brother friends who liked to go on the merry-go-round. No, I get it. No, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> and it just goes around. But there's not much excitement to that. And it's like I liked the roller coaster. And it's like you know what that is. That is a nice analogy for it all. Yeah. And I think that it it does kind of help you understand what this movie really is. There's not that much resolve. In in all honesty, it's just people accepting what's going on in their lives and then moving forward. Yeah. And but there's not actually much resolve. And then it just still ends the same way, but there's another baby, there's an, there's more life, there's more things and it's all perpetual. We're currently we're currently at the top of this roller coaster. Uh and there it seems like everything is great now. Yeah. Well, everybody's got their new kids, but it's just gonna present a whole new set of problems and issues right. and everything, and we're gonna go right back down. Exactly. Strikes uh, and, and gutters, ups and downs. Dude, yeah. Uh, can't exp- experience the sweet without experiencing the bitter, you know. That's right. I mean, it's like it is a central theme in a lot of movies, but it never gets old for me. I, I like being reminded of that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we have uh, watched this movie for the first time, these two guys mm-hmm. and me for maybe 15th, 20th. Who knows? Uh, we stripped away everything. We've talked about it with a critical modern eye. I'd like to know your guys' thoughts on like a, on a rating on this movie. Um, AJ, what do you got, man? Let's see. Honestly, uh, watching it for the very first time, it felt very, very uh, warm, relatable. It was, uh, it was. I liked, I liked watching it. It seems felt very progressive for 1989. Like it felt definitely like it was at- attacking way more um, present day things um, than what I thought about in '89 or than in the '90s. So, uh, and again, I feel like I could watch this at any point. It's got a ton of actors and actresses that I really enjoy watching. I thought they interacted well, and the story was was interesting, and it kept me. Ca- it kept me locked in. So um, I would actually, I think I would honestly give Parenthood um, a 7.5. 7.5. Sean, what about you, man? 
Um, yeah, I agree with uh, mostly everything AJ said. I think that uh, I I like the themes and I like the performances uh, all throughout, and I think the direction is fantastic. I think the script is very interesting as well, uh, the way it kind of flows through uh, each family and gives you a seamless line, but uh, through through throughout it all. Um, like I said, performances are great. A uh, little too melodramatic for me, uh, and on the nose, I would say. Um, at times and that just kind of brought me out of it a little bit um I, I i was getting into these characters and then they would be like yeah so life doesn't have a t-. i'm like yeah, i get it i know i, I, I like these I characters. Saw you were going <laughs> you can just let me watch these characters and i will get that you know um what did i give i gave evil dead a 5.9 you gave evil dead a 6.9 6.9 this is a 5.9 5.9 for sean I like I told you I've I've seen this movie three different stages in life now one as a kid one as a a teenager and now one as a parent and this was my best watch um, f- completing that circle of like seeing it now from the parents perspective and it's a whole it's a whole nother ballpark I think if you have a kid or expecting a kid when you see this movie um, it just reminded me that I'm like I'm probably not gonna do this perfect and I'm probably gonna fuck up. And like, as long as I just really fucking try hard and know that it's going to be a goddamn roller coaster and and one day it's going to be over. And then eventually then you're going to be the grandparent. Mm -hmm. And when he's talking in that speech about how it's never you never stop worrying, you never it never ends. Yeah. I was like, yeah, of course. (laughs) I was like, wait, what? (laughs) No. (laughs) Yeah. So I I really did. I I really do think this is a a pretty important movie and I do think people should watch it. Um, It's not perfect by any means, but I'd give it a seven point four one. Uh, overall for us with a modern day rating, that is a 6.94, which is kind of middle of the pack. That takes us right below the burbs, right above, uh, cool running. So it's just kind of right in that little great outdoors is better by us just slightly. So, you know, I think that, I think that fits pretty well. You had a copy of great outdoors. Makes sense. Yeah. Gary did. Yes, yeah. there you go. Back <laughs> to the future, great outdoors. Yeah, I perfect. love it, man. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. We appreciate all you guys. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in in a couple days. It's time. Back to the future. Oh, my oh, God. It's finally yeah. happening on the day that the modern day, ba- like the Back to the Future, took place in the present. That's so, right. Uh, right. It's going to be a beautiful day, and we are following that up with aliens. We also got a voicemail, 3.3. 3.9? 3. <laughs> 3.9, 9, 3. 9, 2, 3, 7, 2. 3, 1, 9, That's pie. 8, 0, 4, 9, 5, 9, 96. 96. Let's hear today's voicemail. Hello. Hi. Uh, love the show. Just want to put out there, hi as fuck right now. <laughs> Watching Napoleon Dynamite. I think you guys should do that movie. <laughs> Okay, bye. <laughs> I, no, listen, I had to put that one in there because I, I do agree that we should do Napoleon Dynamite, but that was also the best uh, best voicemail. We don't even know who that was, but if that was you, you're probably hearing your voice going, I don't remember leaving that. Jesus. So we hope you'll... That is all I've ever wanted while doing this show. Is like, <laughs> this is Sean's last episode. Hey, man, I fucking love the show. You guys should like cover... GHB Ninja Turtle. Yeah. I fucking love that. Anyway, anyway bye. Later. <laughs> Oh, uh, so we're here for. Shit. We appreciate you guys. Check us out at patreon.com slash confused breakfast. That is the best way to support this podcast. <laughs> if you are a top tier member, you get you get like private discord access, voting on upcoming movies, bonus audio. But you also get your name read on this episode, along with just being in the episode notes. So we are going to read out all of our Patreons today as a thank you. Uh, we got to thank Robin Fawcett, Dane, Joel, Nick Marula, Mark Pryor, Kirlana, Alicia, Nick Fulkerson, Camden Griffith, Francisco Rivera, Cameron J., Bud Larson, Big Big Andy, Katie Beeks, Travis Hunziker, Mr. and Mrs. Roommate, Cale James, Jason Davis, Sean Dixon, Emilio Perez, Skylar Brunson, Jordan Hooten, Brandon Meisner, Willie Cox III, Janelle Lewis, Joe Thomas, Chris Diaro, Marshall G., Mitch Cavanaugh, Josh Miller, Condum, <laughs> Jason Botsford, Stephen Moore, Chris Pryor, Paul Diaro, Jason Hahn, Travis Scanlon, Michael Hody, Gary McCarthy, Corey Vaughn, Ranger Rick and Subalu, Damian Zemek, Zachary Heron, Dallas B. Revis, David Wagoneer, Jenny Wilson, Tim Nash, Mike Zacher, Dwayne Van, Robert Vance, Joey Piamonte, David Waters, Alan Cross, Negaduck, Zerophonic, Amy N., Ryan O. We also got Samuel Miller, David Gould, John Devlin, Zachary Jones, Seth Murray, Tina Hansen. 
Lilu Dallas Multipass, Lance Davis, Jesse Anderson, Mike being Mike, Dale Prestupia, Lana Croft, Derek For Real, Mike Wheeler, uh, Andrew Saul Saltel, Mike Oxford, Garrett Layoff, Aaron Baker, Ryan Grabsky, Michael Nash, Adam Bathin, Ryan Reaver, Quentin Moore, Aaron Vandergriff, Joseph Morris, Zach Evans, Willard Brown, Justin Woolley, Todd Fat Fat Joe, Fat Joe, Fat Joe, Jared Bushman, Melinda Miller, Luke Betius, Shadow X Viking. Wow, awesome. Rachel Heinz, Bailey Rome, Murky, Tyler Dark, John Miller, Caleb Campson, Dean Rowan, Austin Hartman, Jason Ruby Red, Ruby Rod Rogers, Chris M, Cody K- Kirker. Chris Clement, Louis Lanuiski, 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 Alexandra Hemingway, Starling, <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Hevka. I, s- I say Lavinka, Lavinka, Lavinka. To Tiffany, T- Tiffany, Tanner Gray, <laughs> Quincy Mullen, and David Amudia. Uh, you thought we that's forgot your boy, Amodi, Amodi, David Amodai. Doom, Amodi. Go think. Philly. If you thought we forgot you, think again. Cody Cochran, Matthew Rosendahl, Jan Martinez, Jackson M., Jamie Young, Spaceballs, the username, Aaron, Todd, Richard Harding, Brandon Anderson, Captain Chunk, Justin Logan, Brent, Bryant Wayland, Jacob Stahl, Carson Kruger, Aaron Hamblin, Alex Navarro, Richard Bersiaga. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, Bersiaga, <laughs> sorry. Got it. You got it. Stephen Andrew Gibson, Peter Fitz, Jay Bender, Stephen Gatos. Steve Bland, totally not interested. <laughs> Andy M, Chris Nelson, Sean Galbraith, Matt Cruz, Terry Pyatt, Olivia Sauber, Sauberon, G, Kyle Donnelly, Kyle Everly, Tyler Knapp. J- <laughs> you wrote them all wrong, Mike. <laughs> no you know? way, dude. Jose this, Luz, this is their name. <laughs> Robert Ross, Steve Prim, and Jacob Collins. You guys, I don't Thank have you. the there. You're the best thing around, but you are the best. You're around. the best. Around. Around. Check us out at confusedbreakfast.com. Tell all your friends that's pretty much it. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Love you. Deuces. Happy Halloween, I guess. <laughs> <laughs>